The iPhone 16 Pro Max boosts the largest display ever in an iPhone at 6.9 inches as well as the longest tested battery life of any iPhone yet. We also appreciate the camera upgrades and camera control button, but Apple intelligence lacks that wow feature for now and the charging speed could use a boost. The Ginorma 6.9 inch iPhone 16 Pro Max starts at 1199 US dollar with 256 GB of storage and goes on sale September 20. You can upgrade to 512 GB for $200 more and another $200 will get you 1 terabyte. I have been a Pro Max user for years since the iPhone 11 Pro Max but after testing the new iPhones, I'm actually torn about the iPhone 16 Pro Max. It has the largest display ever of any iPhone at 6.9 inches, yes, the thinner bezels help keep the device somewhat compact, but it is still taller, wider and heavier than the iPhone 15 Pro Max which I thought was the near perfect size and weight for a big screen phone. I have gone from feeling like I cheated the system to feeling slightly cheated. This might be an unpopular opinion but I think the new Pro Max is a little too big, at least for my hands. It's more of a stretch now to do simple things like scrolling through web pages or TikTok and once you put a case on your iPhone 16 Pro Max, it's like a mini tank. The good news is that the Pro Max is built to be more durable. In addition to having a titanium band, Apple claims that the improved ceramic shield display on this model is 50% tougher than the last generation. We can't drop these units, but on paper, it's encouraging. The iPhone 16 Pro Max comes in four colors, titanium white, titanium black, natural titanium, and desert titanium. Our iPhone 16 Pro came in the natural which looks fairly modern, but I prefer the desert color as it pops more. The iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max displays don't get any upgrades in terms of brightness or refresh rate, but they are still among the best OLED panels on a phone. The only main difference is that the screen scan is scaled down to a minimum of 1 nits, which means you can use your phone in bed without disturbing anyone else and get an even dimmer alarm clock. Otherwise, the new iPhone 16 Pro Max screen is largely the same, allowing the Pixel 9 Pro to surge ahead in terms of brightness. We measured a max of about 1500 nits for the iPhone 16 Pro Max while the Pixel 9 Pro XL hit more than 2300 nits. Outside in direct sunlight, the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max were both dimmer than the Pixel 9 Pro XL, though Google's phone dimmed faster over time in response to the heat. Other than the display size, the biggest design change to the iPhone Pro Max is the addition of the camera control button. This recessed capacity button on the right side uses haptic to give you feedback and it launches you straight into the camera. No more having to fumble for the on-screen camera shortcut and you can now use the action button for another shortcut. This thing is pretty easy to use in both portrait and landscape mode. So what can you do with camera control? A lot actually. A quick press snaps a photo and a long press starts recording a video, but I'm not a fan of the fact that the video stops when you take your finger off the button. You can also slide your finger across the button to zoom in and out, which is pretty smooth. Not as smooth is the double soft press, which launches a sub-menu of various options, from tweaking the depth and exposure to toggling between multiple photographic styles. Camera control works well, but applying just the right amount of pressure and remembering what a single press and double press do takes practice. I also wouldn't recommend taking macro shots with the camera control as it shook the camera when I got super close to a subject. The iPhone 16 Pro Max gets a bunch of camera upgrades starting with a new 48 megapixel fusion camera for the main shooter that's designed to read data faster. The result should be zero shutter lag and faster focus. I took some shots of people passing by on scooters and moving taxis at the same time on the iPhone 16 Pro Max and iPhone 15 Pro Max and the new iPhone was indeed faster. The results were not necessarily sharper too, as you can see in this side-by-side -side comparison. Here are some camera samples of iPhone 16 Pro Max.
The iPhone 16 Pro Max's video gets an upgrade with 4K video capture up to 120 frames per second and there are some pretty neat things you can do with that footage. Using the playback speed controls, I could slow down a ping pong match to 50%, 25% or 20% and the footage still looked sharp. Apple Intelligence is Apple's version of AI that is designed to be more secure and helpful than what Samsung and Google offer. But right now Apple Intelligence is more of a tease since it's in Diablo over beta right now and it won't launch for the rest of us until October. Even then certain features won't be available such as visual intelligence and chat GPT integration. So what will you be able to do with the Apple Intelligence starting in October? It starts with a new Siri, the assistant has been revamped starting with a redesign that makes the whole outside of the display glow when summoned. And you can type to Siri, now you can you are in a situation where you don't want to use your voice. Siri is definitely more forgiving of screws up as you can correct yourself on the fly and it will still get your command right. I started a timer and changed the time mid-sentence without a problem. You can also ask follow-up questions and Siri will get for the context. Apple Intelligence also delivers a wide range of writing tools. You can have the iPhone System Pro proofread your copy for grammar and word choice or get help rewriting if you want to go for say a more professional tone. For example, I put together a mock email demanding a raise and I got something back that is much more appropriate. You can also have Apple Intelligence summarize long passages of text as I did with a few notes. I wish you didn't have to select all text first, but I did get a fairly good summary of the key points for my shortlist of this video. Don't want to look up how to articles, Siri leverages large language models and Apple support info to give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do lots of stuff on your iPhone from making screen recordings to scheduling a text. This is a game changer for kids who play the IT person for their parents like me. If you are looking for an Apple intelligence feature that tugs at the heartstrings, try making a memory movie. Just enter a key phrase as you prompt and specify the mood and you will see the iPhone System Pro Max create a movie out of thin air complete with music. Clean up in the Photos app a way overdue feature compared to what you will find on the Pixel and Galaxy but it is still nice to have. You can remove unwanted objects or people in the frame with just a tap. The cleanup feature worked fairly well when I tried to remove a person from a selfie but you will get the best results if the background isn't too complicated. The iPhone 16 Pro Max features 8 GB of RAM and Apple's new A18 Pro chip built on second generation 3 nanometer tech, which blows away the Android competition in CPU performance through not graphics. I was sucked in by the Infinity Nikki game which was in beta during testing. The open world puzzler has console-like visuals, complete with realistic looking rippling water and smooth animation as you use a special floating dress to jump from one platform to another. On Geekbench, which measures overall performance, the new iPhones are nearly 50% faster than the Galaxy S24 Ultra Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip on single core and 50% higher on multi core performance. The latest Tensor G4 Pixel phones aren't in the same league. The iPhone 16 Pro Max was also twice as fast than the S24 Ultra in our video editing testing using Adobe Premiere Rush where we time how long it takes to transport a 4K clip to 1080p. The new Pro phones also shave off a few seconds versus the iPhone 15 Pro's time. So what about graphics? The iPhone 16 Pro Max packs a 6-core GPU compared to 5 cores for the regular iPhone 16 series and Apple claims that it's up to 20% faster than the iPhone 15 Pro's A70 chip. On the 3 d Mark Solar Bay graphics test, which has support for ray tracing, the iPhone 16 Pro was 22% faster than the iPhone 15 Pro, however, that's still 18% behind the Galaxy S24 Ultra, which also delivered higher frame rates on the test. There is one other performance test 
we ran to see if Apple's claims of better sustained performance are legit. The iPhone 16 Pro Max features a new internal design with a graphite clad aluminum substructure that's supposed to result in 20% better sustained performance. Interestingly, the iPhone 16 Pro Max turned in a very strong so called stability score of 84% on our 3D Mark Wildlife stress test, which is better than the 75% from the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but the iPhone 16 Pro hit only 66%. It hit a higher overall loop score but had bigger drop-off. The Galaxy S24 Ultra's score was even worse at 60.4%. The iPhone 16 Pro Max is indeed an iterative upgrade and maybe it wouldn't feel that way if Apple intelligence was available today along with all the promised features. Instead, it's going to trickle out over time, so I would not to be in a rush to upgrade. Having said that, I think that iPhone 16 Pro Max is the best phone money can buy right now if you want the biggest screen and longest battery life. It lags in zoom versus the S24 Ultra but you get more endurance better camera quality and plenty of creative features like photographic styles and audio mix. I actually preferred the AI capabilities of the Pixel 9 Pro XL series with its smarter Gemini Live voice assistant and other features like Admi for photos and Pixel screenshots. But the Pixel's performance and battery life trail the iPhone 16 Pro Max. For me, the iPhone 16 Pro Max retains its title as the best phone, but it's not because of Apple intelligence.